Hello and welcome to Dinish Guarda, Cities ABC Open Business Council YouTube podcast series. So today we are here with a new series of uh, episodes and actually, I would say, special moments that I'm going to be sharing with a very special friend, Amrita Sen. And these series are going to be very different from what I've been doing so far on our series, because this is going to be done between my YouTube channel, but as well between Amrita Digital Presence. And what we're going to be doing here is talking about very broad topics that touches everyone in the world. Uh, so, as you know, I'm a writer besides a technologist and a creator, and I love creativity, but I love ideas and I love to speak about this. So today, that's precisely what I'm going to start this series with Amrita. The series are about global humanity topics, about music, about ideas, and about what makes us so special as humans and as well so complex. Um, about Amrita, you, if you see my YouTube podcast series, you'll find out because she's quite famous, but she's one of the most famous, non-famous digital persons because she has this great personality of both artist, creator, designer, uh, business lady, and as well Hollywood and Bollywood superstar because she's been working with the likes of uh, probably for people that uh, saw the Slumdog uh, Millionaire. She was the lady that spoke, that sang the, the main title in the Oscars. And as well, you can find a lot of her information in our digital presence, which we're going to highlight here. So I'm really looking forward to start this new series because this is actually very, actually very dear for me because I love to talk with you about ideas and big uh, topics of humanity. And today, like I was saying, we're going to be talking about music and Buddha and music for Buddha, which is a fantastic topic. And it can actually take probably hours because Buddha is one of the most, that's the religion of Buddhism, that's the Buddha personality. And you have a lot of beautiful and special stories about Buddha, which I love actually one of them probably going to be talking. But you are as well a musician, a creative. So welcome, Amrita, and let's go through this. Yeah, I will tell you what angle I had uh, and on the Buddha story and why I thought it was so interesting. I know, obviously, I come from India. Buddha is was an Indian man who discovered a path to enlightenment. Now in any religious mythology, as you know, and I call it a mythology, is that there was a large story built over centuries and now millennia on why this person was so important. But when you think about how it could have happened, right? How he was able to start in such a big movement, it's quite likely that he wasn't the only person that divined this thought process. It was probably more likely that since you and I are creators and we know very much about what the mythological creative process is, it was probably more likely that he had a massive set of collaborators, starting with a few collaborators in the beginning, leading to many people who helped him develop the story, the myth, the movement, right? And when I think about how it could have happened back in that day, the thought does occur to me that perhaps it was his wife that was one of the people that really influenced his journey from the very beginning. And the reason I say that is because one of the well-known myths about Buddha is that he left his wife and child when, when his child was very young. He left his kingdom, he left his father and mother, and his wife was there with her in-laws for seven years while he was gone. What was that like when she was there to keep the, to keep the household together? What, what would that have been like for her to know that her husband was going off and doing so many amazing things and now she's getting reports throughout the years of what's happening, of the growth of the movement. She's getting reports from all parts of her community. Well, there's a lot of literature that suggests that she actually got in early into the concept of Buddhism, that she was similarly starting her own movement that reflected the teachings of Buddha. 
So by the time he got back to his kingdom, she had already developed a very, very sophisticated network of women who were also engaged in this path towards enlightenment. And it wasn't until much later that he included her into this movement and formed a whole husband and wife. So that must have been an incredible marriage journey. So I did a good amount of reading about this. There's several books which we could get into in the next podcast. But to make a long story short, I very much wanted to be in the position in my artistic journey where I was retelling some of these mythologies of very powerful men, very influential men, and retelling them, reimagining them from the perspective of the woman. Because there was probably a very supportive woman backing him up, right? So I reimagined the story from the standpoint of Yoshadara. And I, and I renamed her Dara. And at that point, when I try to put myself in her shoes, I wrote this, I wrote and illustrated this book called Awakened. So that was a great spiritual journey for me. Uh, I had the opportunity to actually compose and write songs from her perspective of what that journey would look like that goes with the coloring books. And um, I've put three of those songs up and they have a female voice. They have lots of meditation oriented things, but that's how this record and this illustrated novel came to be, is the reimagination of a lot of these mythologies from the standpoint of the other person. Well, this is wonderful and super powerful. And um, so, as you know, I'm a huge fan of your work and as well of this, but it's interesting because Buddha is probably the most universal personality. I'm not talking about the religion, but one of the most, probably more consensual uh, personalities in terms of the idea of wellness, um, about balance with the world, about uh, all this kind of narrative, because of course he was a very powerful personality, but it's about the enlightened one, is actually one of the names that is called. And music, in the other end, which of course is your art, or one of your arts, because you have a lot, is been, all the research tells us that music has been um, First of all, can reduce anxiety, blood pressure and pain, as well as improve sleep quality, mood, mental alertness and memory. So I want to touch right now from the three angles. So there's the narrative about Buddha that you're talking. And actually, I love the story of the, the wife of Buddha because that's amazing. And I think that's a great film and I'm sure you're going to do it and they're putting it public. So the IP will be yours for that. Um, and I think it really is a fantastic story. And I think that in itself will be probably an episode because I want for you to tell the story. Um, the second part is what you created around that narrative with the music. And for this music for Buddha, which is what is the, the title of this first episode. So how do you relate these two things or three things? Because in one end, there's a very concrete narrative of uh, looking at Buddha from the perspective of the wife that he abandoned, and there's of course historical relates on that, and he disappeared because he left his aristocratic um, base in India or in the ancient India, and of course he, he influenced all Asia. Okay, China is Buddhist, uh, and you have all the Vietnam and so forth, so very big countries. But how do you relate the three things? So in one end we have Buddha personality and his wife, in one end, we have the music. And the, I know as well that you're very much into the idea of music as well-being, as music of wellness, and all this rounding of ideas, like a circle of ideas that actually can actually take together all of this. So I want to touch this. So you have the um, music of Buddha, right? I want to make sure I understand the, first, the all the three things that you yes. want to cover. So uh, tell me again the first one. So, music of Buddha, which is the title of our episode. And then yeah. there's three parts. There's Buddha and his wife. There's the story of them. Mm -hmm. The second is the music that he created for the story. And the third is the relationship between the kind of music that you're creating. Which normally, if you're talking about Buddha, I'm sure it will be about enlightenment. Um, it's going to be about well-being. It's yeah. going to be about um, improving. Uh, some some kind of enlightenment uh, in terms of our life because that's what I would associate when you tell music for Buddha. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you how I came about it. See, we don't really know what the music 
during the time of Buddha was. We have no idea. We think it is amalgamation of, uh, you know, Indian classical that was influenced by the Vedic, I would say Vedic influence, the Vedic invasions into a largely Dravidian Indian population around 1500 BC. We think that that's what it was. It wasn't really until Than Sen during the Mughal Empire Emperor, em, the Mughal Empire, that the North Indian classical music that you hear today was largely formed. So back in the time of Buddha, it was something we probably don't know. Now, so what is the music for Buddha really represents? Buddha, I think in the layman's term, and I very much consider myself the layman sitting here in America, not having studied Buddhism, Buddhism is a symbol is a symbol of your breath, is a symbol of using meditation to find out reality, is not confusing your mind with tons of distracting stories all over the world. It's understanding what is real in your breath and in your mind and in the present. Buddhism or Buddha is very much to me the symbol of that. The other thing that is very symbolic to me of Buddha is the enormous collaboration that it would have taken, that it likely had taken to get the movement off the ground. Because the movement competed against very powerful other movements. Uh, in India, it was the formation of the deities, it was the formation of a, of a hierarchical caste-oriented Hinduist culture. So to come in and have this you know, lightning come through your society took a lot of people. So for me, all that the Buddha music really represents is the concept that you focus on real music, real songs that allow you to think, allow you to meditate, allow you to breathe, and at the same time, allows you to understand what the collaboration that it requires artistically to make something good. So if you listen to the three songs that I put, it's a lot of different instrumentalists and different musicians that have come into my studio where it truly is a body of work. Uh, even one song is a body of work that was amalgamated and produced by me using the collaboration of a lot of people. As an example, in the uh, Mother and Son, there is an old Bengali lyric in there. What I managed to do was the old Bengali lyric is now folded into an electronica bed. And it really reflects, if you think about it, think about how that song was created. It reflects all the hard work of the folk writers in the state of Bengal, in the history of Bengal, to write the lyric and the melody. It took all the hard work of the people to popularize that song. So it, it got to me as a child in America. Think about all the work that was required. Then it took all the work of somebody who created Apple Music Logic as a studio DAW to be able to import that song, right? Get me to vocalize it, put it in my DAW, and then have all of these pads, whether I'm using native instruments or Omnisphere or all these different musical instruments virtually, all the hard work that went into getting that sound, which now sounds like a holistic collaborative art, right? That to me is what the album represents, is that just because you're using a pencil doesn't mean that there weren't a thousand people involved in making that pencil a commercializable product. And that that is truly where I believe that the modern mashup musical genre will go is not only will it involve a lot of people who work with one common idea, but it will come with the recognition that the world had to evolve, technology had to evolve to get us to that point where we could even do it in the first place. Well, this is, uh, there's so much here and I think uh, I probably, uh, I would uh, ask everyone to brief and think about this because it's beautiful. Um, Let's go right now to the wife of Buddha narrative. And I have a lot of questions, but let's go to that because it's, I love it so much. It's really so powerful. Um, so if you can just uh, highlight 
the way you take that for yeah well you know i don't really know what happened nobody does which in their marriage right like she must have been very very mad when he came back and showed up with being from being called siddhartha to now being called the buddha right we don't know what happened but what we can do as modern storytellers is we have the creative flexibility we have the license now because it's a public domain story any religion if you think about it is a public domain mythology we have the license as creators to completely create a new story from her perspective so that's all i really did all i did was put a face to her and i built a past of her and the past that i conjured up in my own mind was imagine this you know girl she was not she never thought she would marry siddhartha right but imagine this girl who lives in some you know remote suburb of the big city they didn't have suburbs back then but the suburb of the big city where buddha's buddha's father's empire was and in the suburb her father was just a poor farmer and he took care of the family in this little house in this little hut and she didn't have that many friends she had to walk to her school and she was very close to a tree now later we find out in the story it was the bodhi tree but she was very close to her tree and that tree was her friend that tree was her spiritual soulmate if you will and the father had to make a living he had to make wood and he told her if you don't clean the leaves of this dying tree i'm going to have to get rid of it one day but she said I promise, I promise, I'll always clean, I'll always rake the leaves, I'll get rid of it, I'll take care of it. It's my baby. But she was a little girl and she had some moments of lapse in memory, right? Uh, one day she was hanging out with her friends and she forgot to rake the leaves and when she got back home, the father had gotten so frustrated that he, cut, he chopped off the tree. Which propagated now, it incited her revenge story against her parents. She was so upset she left the house and she traveled hundreds and hundreds of miles on foot until she finally became a maid in Siddhartha's father's palace. And therein is the beginning of our meeting of Buddha and Dara, who I call Dara, and how they meet and how they fall in love. And you might have to wait till the next episode until I tell you what happens when she goes to the castle or the palace. <laughs> Wow, this is uh, it's one of the most beautiful stories and as well, I think it's part of your work and I urge everyone listening to us to research about Amrita and she has a new website coming and a lot of other things as well, the Spotify account is that this is the story, the complexity, but as well the simplicity, like uh, mythical stories that actually are timeless. And I think that is kind of wonderful for this. So I think this, um, I would say, well, I have thousands of, of questions here, but I will let this be the first episode. Um, and this, we keep it right now short. And um, please come to the second one because it'll be even more exciting. Thank you so much, Amrita. Thanks, Dennis. <laughs>